Good morning. I am the Reverend Joan Javier Duval, Minister of the Unitarian Church of Montpelier, and I welcome you to this time of worship. The past week has been an especially trying one, witnessing the violent events unfold in our nation's capital and the continuing turmoil and uncertainty of the state of our democracy. It is true that every Sunday when we gather for worship, we come together into our shared time with many joys and sorrows on our hearts, as well as the news of the day on our hearts and minds. This morning, we hold the collective weight of a country facing the worst part of ourselves. And we arrive into our hour of worship with the vulnerable and painful honesty that comes with this reckoning. Yet we also come together and worship this morning to remind ourselves of all that is good and true alongside this pain. We come together to find solace and hope. We come together to reawaken our imaginations in the dreariness and bleakness of this particular moment. And so I welcome you into this time of worship with all that you carry and all that you are, your anger, your sadness, your confusion, your fear, your yearning for hope, your resolve, your numbness, your dreams. You, all of you is welcome. And these opening words are by the writer Jason Reynolds on this month's worship theme of imagination. He writes, imagination is so powerful that it could set forth 400, 500 years of something wrong, which means that it very well could set forth 400, 500 years of something right. That's the beauty of humanity. Opening song this morning is number 170 in our gray hymnal, We Are a Gentle, Angry People. Um, you may know that this song was written by Holly Near right after the um, Harvey Milk um, assassinations in 1978 in San Francisco and helped calm people down, helped give them a sense of um, hanging on uh, with all the different emotions that we have. So I invite you to sing with me. We are a gentle, angry people. Um, the last verse will do a cappella because this song is often done outside um, at vig vigils when we need the strength of community and singing together. singing, singing for all. 
and we are singing, singing for our lives. We are a gentle, loving people, and we are singing, singing for our lives. I am here in the Children's Chapel with so many friends this morning. We had 22 stuffed animals join us for perhaps, I don't know, um, the first ever stuffed animal sleepover in our congregation. We thought that with this month's theme of imagination, since we cannot be together in the church building and there are no sleepovers happening this year as we might often have with the youth group or coming of age or owl program, that our stuffies could be together and bring some joy to the building. So you can see some of these animals here and I wanted to share, they've been sharing with me some of the pictures they've taken over the last period of time of the great time they've had together in their sleepover this week. So with joy and imagination, I invite you to see their adventures and join in this journey. Since January's theme is imagination, we thought we could have a stuffed animal sleepover. We sent out invitations and posted in the e-news. People dropped their stuffies off on our porch. Each stuffy had a name tag. Their human could list their stuffy's name and other helpful information. At last, the start of the sleepover began. They started in the children's chapel with the chaperone, Spirit and Love Bear. Tangerine volunteered to light the chalice. They introduced the theme of imagination, and each animal introduced themselves by name and pronouns and said their favorite thing to imagine. It was a great way for them to get started to know each other. To make sure everyone had a good time and was safe at the sleepover, they needed a covenant. That's a set of agreements for how a group is when they're together. The animals all liked the ones their human friends had created and signed, so they wanted to stick with that one. Then, Love Bear and Spirit asked what the animals knew about church from their human friends. Sharing gems of joy and concern was something many of them had heard about. They took turns sharing and were great listeners. Some were worried about things they'd heard in the news. Others were excited for the snow or new friends. And some were nervous about their first night away from home. Rainbow, the cat, and others said that their human really missed singing at church, so they all sang some of their favorite songs from church together. Many of the animals mentioned the human children had told them about the fun of ringing the bell. They wanted to try. Fonzie, the panda, thought for sure he was big enough to do it, but he wasn't heavy enough. I'll help, said Oliver, but more weight was needed still. Rainbow, Slothy, climbed on, and still more. Eventually, they needed everyone to climb on, and on the count of three, they tugged, and then the bell rang like it has never rung before. Some had heard about the fun their humans had in the nursery, so they all went and played there. Someone mentioned the idea of going outside for some fresh air. Spirit and Love Bear said that was fine. Well, the bears and monkeys can't see a tree without doing you-know-what. That's right. They had to climb it. Since they're much lighter than us humans, it didn't seem to it would hurt the trees. So they taught all the animals how to climb. Even the dogs, polar bears, penguins, and even, yes, the llama twins. Afterward, they had a dinner of popcorn, pretzels, and hot cocoa on the stage. All was going gray when a piece of popcorn landed on Wrigley the cat's paw. Wrigley threw it playfully across the circle, and soon, well, everyone joined in. What fun! But 
What a mess. Someone is going to have to clean this up, said Spirit and Love Bear. And if it's not one of us, that wouldn't be in our covenant of being kind. But we were having fun, they said. All the animals happily agreed to clean up the stage, and everybody helped out. It went quickly. Next, they wanted to see the sanctuary. They'd never been in such a big room. Want to play hide-and-seek? asked Douglas. Yes, said the others, and they quickly scattered. Douglas looked and looked, but those other animals were good at hiding. Finally, Douglas found Oliver. Some animals wanted to speak into the microphone and announced a game of flashlight tag. Then they discovered the youth group had decorated the bell tower room with pretty lights. In the bell tower room, they took a vote on what to do, and Dance Party was the big winner, except for Pizza, the dog, who did not want to dance. Spirit asked if Pizza would take over her role of photographer, which Pizza happily agreed to. The dancing began. After that, it was late. Love Bear calmed them down with a song and storybook, and then Penguin told some stories about his life. Penguin was born in 1949 and had many exciting tales to tell of his life with his human, Coley Baker. Finally, it was time for everyone to get tucked in. Like all sleepovers at the church, they used pew cushions for mattresses. They were yawning, but also still very excited and talkative. After a while, Spirit and Love Bear had to separate the mattresses a little bit so they would quiet down. The lights of the Christmas tree made a great nightlight. Fonzie played the organ to wake everyone up, and football led everyone in some downward dog yoga poses. They had to take some selfies with their new friends that they had made, and then they headed down to the vestry where they had breakfast. They looked at the name tags of all their humans and even put them on. They were drawn to the photograph of all the members of our congregation and decided to take a group photo for themselves. And they hope that all of you can sit with the imagination of how good it will feel when all of us are together again. As we begin our time of meditation and prayer, um, I have to say thank you. I am, um, look, I'm going to show you in a second, but you all pulled off something amazing. And um, the sanctuary is filled with your faces. Um, and I'm just overwhelmed and feeling so much gratitude and joy in being able to see you. Um, and we're starting our time of meditation and prayer with a body prayer. And so I am going to, excuse me, as I turn this whole rig that I have around so that you can see the amazing outcome of what you all have sneakily put together. It is just amazing. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, and so I'm going to invite you into this time of meditation and prayer into a time of movement if you feel like taking me up on that invitation to move with a body prayer and I'll let you know what's a very simple body prayer I'll let you know what the words are first and then we'll add some motions and we'll do that together a few times and so if you are ready and able want to stand wherever you are, you're welcome to stand. You can remain seated if that's more comfortable for you for this body prayer. And the words of this prayer are very simple. They are, I am here, I receive, I hold close, I let go, I give thanks. I'll say it again, pausing and letting you repeat just the words after me. I am here, I receive, I hold close, I let go, I give thanks. And now I'll show you what motions will go with these statements of affirmation and presence. 
First, I am here standing or sitting and just bringing your arms down to your side in a restful position. I am here. And then bringing your hands up, palms open, I receive. And allow yourself to receive whatever is present for you, whatever you're feeling in this moment, however the spirit is moving for you. And then bringing your hands, right hand on top of left, on top of your heart, I hold close. And holding close all that is sacred and precious to you. holding close all that might be difficult in this moment. And then sweeping up your right hand, then your left, I let go. Letting go of what is impermanent. Letting go of what is not serving you in this moment. And then bringing those arms in front in a prayer pose, I give thanks. And allowing yourself a moment of gratitude for whatever, whoever you might be giving thanks for today. So we'll do this in a repetitive fashion, three times with the words and then three times silently and a, a breath at the end. I am here. I receive. I hold close. I let go, I give thanks. I am here, I receive, I hold close, I let go, I give thanks. I am here, I receive, I hold close, I let go, I give thanks. And now three times in silence. Thank you. And as you settle back into your seat or land in whatever spot you might be standing, I invite you to just take another cleansing breath. Mm. And now let us acknowledge all that is being held by this community today, all of the joys and gratitudes and all of the concerns and sorrows. I will invite you to share in the chat first any joys or celebratory milestones that you have on your heart today. I won't be reading these aloud, but I do invite you to read these on your own, to offer congratulations and celebration to one another as you are moved. So now you're invited in the Zoom chat or in the Facebook comments to share any joys, any milestones that you would like to be lifted up for our community. And know that we share in joy and in gratitude with you this morning. A 
I'm watching as these wonderful joys and gratitudes are being shared. Alongside these joys and gratitudes and cause for celebration, I know that we are also holding concern and sorrow this morning. And you're welcome to share now in the chat or the comments for us to read and to hold with you any concerns, sorrows, personal or otherwise that you are holding and that you would like to be lifted up in this community this morning. I have a few that I'd like to share with you that were sent to me. I want to lift up Betty McKinnell's brother-in-law, Chris, who was admitted to the hospital over a week ago with worsening COVID-19. Let us lift up our healing thoughts and prayers for Chris and all those who are suffering from this disease. Joe Bauer asks for prayers for peace and grace for her family and for her mother who has a terminal illness and is approaching her end days. Let us lift up prayers of peace and grace for Joe's family. Finally, I want to share with you all, in case there are those of you who hadn't heard, the sad news of the passing of Don Fister, who was active in this congregation before moving to Asheville, North Carolina, several years ago, where he was also active with UU congregations. Some of you may have known Don through his involvement in the broader central Vermont community as well. Don died on Christmas Eve in Asheville. And we hold all of his friends and loved ones in our hearts in this time of loss. For all of you who are holding joys and gratitudes, concerns, and sorrows this morning, know that you are held in the love of this community and that we share in your celebration and in your sadness. And we will be turning the chat off momentarily as we move into our time of prayer. And so I invite you, won't you, Please pray with me in whatever form, whatever meaning that has for you. Spirit of great compassion, transcendent mystery beyond our understanding, our hearts weigh heavily this morning in the wake of violence and destruction, our minds filled with the images and sounds of injurious rage and we wonder, how could it come to this? We lament the turning away from responsibility by leaders with an oath to protect our democracy. We wonder, what is the way forward? In our anger, in our confusion, in our fear, we mourn the death caused by Wednesday's attack we mourn for the display of violent white supremacist extremism, a reminder of the deep and unhealed wound of racism in our country. And amidst the pain of the events in our nation's capital, we continue to face the unfathomable pain of an ongoing pandemic. We mourn for the 3,800 and 66 American lives lost to COVID-19, the same day of the insurrection, the over 370,000 total lives already lost in this country alone. Loss stacks upon loss, fear has a stronghold. And so we pray this day for comfort and solace for all that grieves our hearts. We pray that those who have endured ongoing traumas of dehumanization and misogyny and white supremacy find a way towards healing. We pray that those who are the targets of extremist violence in this dangerous time will be protected. We pray that all of us stay convicted in our values to seek inclusion equity, 
justice, and liberation. O spirit of life and love, may we be filled with compassion for ourselves, for all who are hurting, for all beings. May we know ourselves as interconnected and not separate. And may our hearts turn towards a peace that can uproot strife, a peace rooted in a love that is stronger than hate. Blessed be. Amen. After one of my son's annual wellness visits with his pediatrician, we were given a book to take home. And the book was called A Box Can Be Many Things. I bet you can imagine the basic storyline. On the opening page, a mother is pictured placing a big empty cardboard box in the trash bin saying, this box is junk as two children look on. As soon as the mother is out of sight, they take the box and one of them declares, a box can be many things. Readers follow along as the box transforms into a cave, then a car, then a house, then a bird cage, all to the children's delight. With the power of imagination, a simple cardboard box can be transformed and serve as a portal to fun and adventure. Our worship theme this month is imagination. And in light of the events of this past week, I wonder about the power of imagination and what that particular capacity of the human mind enables from innocent child's play to grave ill and harm. The insurrection by an angry mob of extremists on Wednesday showed the dangers of imagination turned to delusion when fueled by hate and lies. The storming of the Capitol was inspired by some big lies. One being that the 2020 presidential election was stolen from the current president, which has no basis in fact. The other big lie with a much longer history is the lie of the superiority of the white race over all others. This big lie was conjured up over 400 years ago, based in the fabrication of race as a marker of human difference and used to justify the subjugation of enslaved people, the genocide of indigenous communities, and a continuing tangled web of ideas and policies leading to what the historian and writer Isabel Wilkerson calls a racial caste system in the United States of America, which is still alive today. We have all in our different ways been trying to come to grips with the reality of what took place in our nation's capital this past week. Even for some of those who were there in the Capitol building who had some idea that violence was possible, what actually took place was beyond their imagining. And as details continue to emerge, we all face the grief and the horror and indeed, indeed fear of what may yet come. As people of faith and conscience who uphold democratic principles within our own religious community, we must denounce the insurrection and any attempt to overthrow the will of the people or to disrupt the peaceful transition of power those that are responsible for this anti-democratic attack must be held accountable. And we as people of faith, faith must also continue on in the work of imagining a new story beyond the one that fuels white supremacist extremism, as well as the more covert workings of racist white supremacist ideas and policies in our day-to-day -day lives and even within ourselves. 
As I have taken in images of the Capitol during Wednesday's siege, I have also been taken back to memories of my own visits there. And maybe this has happened for you if you've been to the United States Capitol. I've had memories of myself inside the building as a visitor in my teenage years, sitting in the house chamber, viewing the statues and statuary hall and outside the building, protesting the Iraq war in 2003 on my way to the Women's March four years ago. I have thought about all of the nonviolent protests and demonstrations that have taken place within the halls of the Capitol to push for the expansion of healthcare, to call for the end of the separation of families at the border, to demand action to address the climate crisis. Demonstrations, I will say, that ended in the arrest of protesters for civil disobedience. Despite its state of disarray and injury after the desecration this past week, the United States Capitol as with our own state house here in Montpelier, has been a place where imagination can take hold and lead to creative, bold, and necessary actions for the common good. It is also a place where people whose ancestors could not have dreamed that they would have a seat in its chambers go to do the work of the people. One such person is Congressman Andy Kim of New Jersey. During the deadly attack on the Capitol this past Wednesday, Representative Kim was in his office in an adjacent building and had to shelter in place for hours. And he sat, as, sat in his office and worried about the safety of his staff and his colleagues. He was finally able to re-enter to join his colleagues in certifying the results of the election. And afterwards, he made his way to the Capitol Rotunda, a room that he loves, and he found it there strewn with debris in the aftermath of the insurrection, trash and water bottles, clothing, even an American flag was cast onto the floor, left behind by the mob. Representative Kim, the child of Korean immigrants and newly reelected to a second term, describes serving in Congress as a blessing and democracy as a place of opportunity, affording him a chance to do something extraordinary. He is the first Asian American elected to Congress from the state of New Jersey. And for an hour and a half in the early morning hours after the mob had left, he knelt down and filled bag after bag with trash, cleaning up some of the mess left in the wake of the insurrection. Imagination fueled by deception and fear can pave a dangerous road as we saw this past week. But when love is the animating force of our imagination and not fear, well, that is an entirely different story that is when we are truly alive and on fire in all the right ways. Not to burn it all down because we didn't get our way, but to be part of the building up, part of making right the wrongs and casting visions for the future that will get us beyond the current mess. Biblical scholar Walter Brueggemann has written it is the vocation of the prophet to keep alive the ministry of imagination, to keep on conjuring and proposing alternative futures to the single one the king wants to urge as the only thinkable one. And here, Brueggemann is writing about the biblical prophets, but his statement rings true for prophets of our time as well, who can be any of us, in any moment. We all keep alive the ministry of imagination by continuing to conjure up and proposing alternative futures to any single one desperately forced upon us by power hoarding leaders. 
Right now, burdened as we are with the serious realities of the present day, it can be difficult to lean into our imaginations. Yet in our minds and in our hearts, imagination plants the seeds of the possible. And in these times, we are desperately in need of both facing present realities with as much honesty and vulner vulnerability as we can muster, and also imagining new possibilities beyond our present circumstances. This imagination starts in each of us, in our own hearts and minds. The African-American writer James Baldwin said, though we do not wholly believe it yet, the interior life is a real life and the intangible dreams of a people have a tangible effect on the world. Now is still the time to nurture these intangible dreams. It is still the time to root our imaginations in the depths of our love and to resist the forces that would seek to trample our imaginations with violent rage and power-seeking polarization. Especially for those of us whose very existence is the target of that violent rage, tending to the interior life is a necessary act, an act of resilience and resistance and survival. At the end of the children's story, a box can be many things. After the box has been transformed into a birdcage, the two children continue to tear at it until the box is on scraps and pieces on the floor. Now the box is junk, one of them says. And at this point in the story, we are reminded that the imagination can still redeem even the broken pieces. The children pick the pieces up. The box is a hat and a flag and a necklace and a sword, they declare. Amidst the brokenness of our country that is too painful to deny, there is still kindness and determination and goodwill and dreams of liberation and justice and our humanity. Can we just imagine? So I invite you now to sing with me our closing song, number 346 in the gray hymnal. Come sing a song with me. And as Joan reminded us earlier in our um, embodied prayer, sometimes when we have so many different emotions, it's helpful to be in touch with our body and feel our strength. So I would like to invite you to rise in body or in spirit, whatever that means for you, and sing together. Come sing a song with me. And remember, there's a rose in the winter time. <laughs> song with me come sing a song with me come sing a song with me that I might know your mind and I'll bring you hope when hope is hard to find and I'll bring a song of love and a rose in the winter time come a dream with me come dream a dream with me come dream a dream with me that I might know your mind and I'll bring you hope <clears throat> when hope is hard to find and I'll bring a song of love and a rose in the winter time Come walk and rain with me. Come walk and rain with me. Come walk and rain with me that I might know your mind. And I'll bring you hope when hope is hard to find. And I'll bring a song of love and a rose in the wind.
winter time. Come share a rose with me. Come share a rose with me. Come share a rose with me that I might know your mind. And I'll bring you hope when hope is hard to find. And I'll bring a song of love and a rose in the winter time. And as we draw our service to a close, we extinguish the chalice and carry within each of us its healing flame, the warmth of community, and the spark of hope into the days and the weeks ahead. And as we do so, let us join in saying our mission statement. We welcome all as we build a loving community to nurture each person's spiritual journey serve human need, and protect the earth, our home. We are a gentle, angry people, and we are singing, singing for our lives. We are a gentle, angry people, and we are singing.